But really the one event that defines at least our generation, we'll never forget this, that um, put air quality in everybody's, all 7 billion people's thoughts is COVID-19. Tell us a little bit about what we learned during COVID-19 uh, and what did scientists do to help contain as best as they could the transmission of this pandemic during the time. What was your own life like during COVID-19? Let's start with that. Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's, there's a little bit on the ambient air pollution problem that was, you know, modified by COVID-19, right? Because we didn't go out much and so on. Well, that's the, uh, that's an interesting, but, but maybe the smaller lesson learned. The, um, the big one was, you know, so we shut down, um, we all shut down probably around March and we, it was spring break in the US, right when this got to a tipping point, so to speak. And, um, and uh, I remember when we shut down, we said the university will open up in two weeks. Because the idea was, yeah, in two weeks, we'll solve the problem, we'll come back. I mean, there's just so much uncertainty, right? So um, as, an, as an aerosol scientist, I mean, this is the first thing that people were talking about, the, the big, uh, the, uh, the big uh, uh, discussion then was uh, six-foot spacing, if you remember. It's like, oh, you'll be, you, should, you want to be six feet away from it. Social distancing. Social distancing, right? That was the term that was... Uh, literally uh, uh, thrown at us, you know, keep, uh, maintain social distancing. So as aerosol scientists, the first scientists, our entire community recognized that just, that just doesn't make sense. You know, we measure particles. In fact, that's the first time we saw the word aerosol in right. like rank public discourse. Correct, correct. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, that's the first time when we said we're working on aerosol science, people... Uh, you know, previously, if you said we were working on aerosol science, they would say, oh, you, you guys build those aerosol cans. And so now, you know, they began to under, understand that we're really dealing with the particles in the air. And, um, and so we recognized very quickly, right then and there, that this is a problem that isn't addressed by social distancing. Mm -hmm. Well, social distancing was important. It was not an end all of infection prevention. And as a matter of fact, there was nothing magical about six feet. Six feet came about uh, with respect to droplet, uh, 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 droplet distance traveled. So, you know, how long will droplets travel and so on. Back of the envelope calculation suggested in six feet, they're either going to drop or evaporate and not of concern. And um, that, that is a, you know, that was a concept that was uh, very ingrained and, and uh, deep in medical science. And, uh, and it took us, in the aerosol scientists, and we were involved through, the, through our aerosol association in trying to sort of re-educate the medical community that that needs to be updated. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, these are the small particles. We know small particles can travel long distances. Um, the first thing we did at the university, and they were very kind about letting us back in before the students came in to just explore, you know, how safe are the classrooms. So we would inject particles and show that they would travel all over the room. There's no safe distance. And, and, and so, uh, obviously, you know, that became more commonly recognized very quickly. The university shut down. Uh, but that's when, you know, at least for me, it was a, it was a shift to indoor uh, aerosol measurements and, and, uh, and, so, and, and sort of indoor aerosol research. And... Uh, so number one, we recognize COVID is spread through particles, particles that we are generating as we speak and breathe and, of course, cough and sneeze. But in this case, it's just a lot of these are coming from speaking and breathing. So you wouldn't even know that I am putting out these particles. And so educating the public became a big, big part of what we were doing. So we had, uh, I gave one of these talks uh, uh, sitting at home, we had given a Zoom call that had about, I don't know, 150 people from around, a lot of them from the village that we were in, parts, we are in still parts of them, but also from around the country. Uh, because, you know, we had a, a pretty good handle on the particle side of things, and the, obviously the medical profession, uh, professionals had a pretty good handle on the 
infection side of things, it was really important that we combine this information. And, uh, and, and, and I think, to, think it was very clear then and there that, again, this, this and several other problems like these are interdisciplinary in nature. Uh, and, and this is where maybe a, a little bit of a deep expertise in one field helps you sort of uh, work with, with uh, researchers in another field who have a deep expertise in that field to combine and solve these problems that really neither of us could individually solve. Um, yeah, so our life then was, uh, I, I, the research part of our life really picked up. I mean, we uh, I got in, involved in some very interesting projects with, uh, um, you know, with, with a number of uh, agencies uh, uh, that to this day is still ongoing. Yeah. 